Welcome back, fellow travelers, to another compelling companion customization tutorial. Today, we're diving into Peter Lon's Creature Builder Excel workbook and how I use it to customize our No Man's Sky companions. Before we begin, again, you do not want to proceed if you're not familiar with coding. You can teach yourself, but if you're not familiar, don't proceed. It's a complicated thing that can uh, affect your game file. And we don't want that. We want your experience to be joyful and without issues. Uh, so before you start, make sure you have your backup saves. And let's begin. Now, firstly, I highly suggest you visit Peter Lon's own video on his Creature Builder Excel workbook for better comprehension before proceeding with this video. Uh, he has several. Uh, feel free to drop a comment there and tell him on set or set you. In this tutorial, uh, we won't be going by steps uh, like the previous. Instead, let's walk through the various sections of the workbook together and I'll give insight into how I have used those sections. And please keep in mind that this is a macro based workbook and you do not ever want to save. That's right. Don't ever save when using this workbook or it'll mess up the macros Peter put in place. If you happen to do so by accident, you may want to just delete the workbook and folders and download it all over again. Also, if you're not familiar with uh, Excel workbooks and how they function, that is okay because the macros that Peter set up are easy to use and labeled. So here, once you have your workbook open, you'll find yourself in the main page. Uh, we will not be working in this area uh, except to sometimes maybe change to a different creature ID. Or maybe a descriptor file name. Now please take note of this warning. Do not change any data on this sheet. To the right of that, you're going to see a couple of buttons. You'll see a config form and a load EXML button. These are what we're going to to use to dig dip deeper into a specific creature. To write those buttons, uh, if you see here, there's a slider, and you can pull that slider all the way to the right. You're going to see things like the creature ID column, descriptor file name, creature type, biomes, behavior, custom species name, maturity. In this section, we all want to concern ourselves with the uh, creature ID and maybe the, the descriptor file name. Either of these we can use to get to the next step. Uh, I say this because those two will allow us to choose what type of creature we will end up working with. It's most familiar just to go by the creature ID, but those who data mine the game code will recognize the descriptor, like in this case, antelope.descriptor.exml, as the game file code that holds information about particular creatures in the game. Now, Peter was able to bring that information into this Excel workbook and give us a look 
at all of the options those creatures have and what we can get to change around. So let's start with creature ID antelope since it's at the very top and you could also click on a descriptor name uh, once you clicked to highlight any one of those uh, you're going to want to go ahead and now click on load EXML now if we scroll back just a sec here you'll see that it loaded it up here Uh, but you'll want to hit the config form button to bring us into the form which manually provides the hierarchy descriptor details of that antelope. So here, let's just move this to the side over here. Let's just move this a little bit over here and we can get a better look at both of these. So here it will also pop up an image form. This is the image form. And that shows various screenshots from Peter that displays the changes you made to a pet. Uh, so it'll show like the pet's details. Uh, you'll notice that when you make changes and you would like to see what those changes look like, there is a show pet button here. Unfortunately, he doesn't have screenshots of every single pet combination. Sometimes you just have to go in game with the creature to see what it looks like. However, let me tell you how I learned these descriptor parts. This is something that I did that I think gave me greater understanding of those descriptor definitions and what they may look like, even without an image. Uh, you could use the image form, click the arrows, next or previous, and you'll see a copy to form button the left there that will take the descriptors of that creature in the image and fill the other form with it so it took me some time but I would study what these were by going through all of the available images and seeing what the change from one creature to the next and see what descriptors changed. I didn't take my own screenshots of those descriptors and, uh, that didn't have images, but I would memorize them. Uh, so when you go through them, you'll eventually remember, uh, like, you know, for instance, like, uh, you know, what a skinny deer looks like, or uh, a deer ACC underscore 2X rarest. So you'll, you'll eventually remember stuff. Uh, I mean, if you're serious about this, then yeah, that's what I did, and uh, it's helped me understand the descriptors for many different types of creatures. Now, I've spent countless hours of fun discovering and experimenting with these unknown descriptors, and I hope you do too. The most important aspect of these descriptors these descriptors is that they are in a hierarchical order. You can't take the head descriptor 
and put it at the bottom. If you tried it like I have, just to see what would happen, uh, you'll end up with the, a blank space where your creature should be in your companion register. So the game, if you go in game, uh, it won't register what you've done. Um, so, you know, when you're taking this information and you're putting it into the JSON file and uh, going in game with that new creature that you just made, if the hierarchy is off, it's not going to display the, the creature. It'll be just a blank spot there. Uh, so yeah, you'll have to start all over from there. So, if you keep in mind, you'll see all the, creep, uh, the creature descriptors will start with the head. Then, head accessories. Then, depending on the type of creature, maybe neck accessories, body type, maybe body accessories then the tail and maybe tail accessories, all depending on the type of creature uh, you're dealing with here. This is how it usually goes, but uh, yeah, again, it changes depending on the creature. Let's say uh, one creature will have options for different body types, then leg types, then tail types, and tail accessories, where another uh, may not have options for legs or tail accessories. So it's just dependent on the creature. Now this is a good time to mention the glitch stacked companions I give out. Uh, this is the descriptor section that I use to make them. Now the process isn't just slapping in as many descriptors as you can in this area. It's also testing which descriptors work best with each other and testing in order to find out where those descriptors should be placed in the hierarchical order. Now my next tutorial will focus solely on this process, as well as some of my other uh, companion customization tricks, like for how I created launch pad or kit with the phantom legs. So we'll go over that, but I feel uh, this is definitely more important to uh, get out to you. So you can see this is a progression that I've went through in order to learn how to customize the companions. And again, please uh, don't proceed if you're not familiar with coding. Um, by all means, you can learn and come back to the save editor. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, if you want a pet, a uh, custom pet, you can reach out to me and we can kind of go from there and see how I can help you out. Okay, so the uh, descriptors are the most important section in determining how your creature will look. However, let's take a look at some of these other sections and how they can affect your custom companion. So here we have scale. Scale determines the size of the creature. Pretty straightforward, right? Uh, what, you, what you're going to want to keep in mind is that it isn't always the actual size in meters that it displays. Some creatures, like uh, the sandworm, for instance, are shown to be natively 7 meters. Uh, but we all know they look way bigger than that when you see them in-game. Uh, so I would suggest taking scale to be a relative attribute, as it may be around the scale you set it to, maybe not. So again, test constantly for your best results. Uh, this is the part I give you a warning on the scale. 
yes, you can make the creature, uh, you know, the size of a trading post or even a planet. But when you do that, you risk crashing not only your game, but someone else's. Uh, if you have a an extra large creature, don't go to community events and bring them out, as that will end up crashing the game for several other travelers. Uh, you don't want to do that, and henceforth you'll be a party pooper. So don't poop on the parties, as we're all there to have fun. Uh, if you want to show off your extra large pets, bring them out in your own single player game. Take screenshots, post those on various social medias uh, that we all have at our disposal. Um, I would suggest that you don't go bigger than six meters if you want to bring a pet out at a community event. Uh, eight meters is what the game considers mega fauna, so keep that in mind. Uh, you can make critters extra small and uh, that won't mess up anyone's game uh, however it may be a little difficult to track them uh, once you bring them out and to get eggs from them <laughs> all right let's move on to the seeds now uh, the seeds are alphanumeric hex codes that the developers use as a sort of shorthand to describe uh, detailed aspects of the creatures. The descriptors would be the cake and the various types of seeds would be like the frosting and the little bits and bobs on top. Uh, so let's go through them and what we know about them. Now first up is the creature seed. Uh, this is the seed that determines things like marking stripes or spots this hex code uh, there's not much to know about the how to manipulate it but for these uh, we can look at the seed hex code and change the number or a character to a different character like uh, let's say nine to zero you know And the letters go from A to F. All right, so keep that in mind when you're looking at the hex code. It's going to go from 0 to 9, and the letters go from A to F. Uh, so change those characters within those parameters. Uh, when I say the hex codes were shorthand for the devs, understand that they know that maybe the first character may stand for something and the next three characters may stand for another type of thing like maybe a type of marking uh, and the next two characters something like where on the body and and so on and so on until the end of the 16 character seed uh, so you can do a great amount of discovery with these seeds through copious testing and get the exact details you want to see from your companion uh, keep that in mind when when manipulating any of these seeds. Next, we have the creature secondary seed. Uh, I assume it's like the first with markings and stripes and spots and such, but with maybe more options depending on the creature type. So uh, again, you know, test, take notes of the changes. Some creatures do have a creature secondary seed where the line would read zero. So that means the uh, creature seed doesn't have the second the creature secondary seed doesn't have any options, any further options for stripes and marks and spots. So that's what that indicates. Now what species seed, it may determine if the creature is isolated to one planet and in the back half of the seed code, uh, if they're a land or water dweller. 
Now, I'm not certain and haven't done enough testing, but if uh, this is the seed to manipulate, to have a creature water, land, or air base, this could lead to some interesting results like getting water creatures on land without mods. Uh, further testing is needed here. So if you want to do that, uh, please, by all means, be very thorough with your testing and uh, yeah, show us the results. And, you know, I am going to show you the results, what I come up with uh, when I get there. I'm doing several different testing right now, but uh, this is definitely on the list. Now, the wiki states that uh, genus seed or the genus is what determines the species, uh, where the species spawns, like butterflies and T-Rexes on a prehistoric planet. Uh, another seed that requires further testing. So it is not going to affect the way the companion looks. So if you're just looking into you know, making different creatures look different ways. Uh, this isn't something you have to, uh, you know, worry about or even, uh, you know, uh, test. You can leave that, you know, further down the road uh, once you get to a further point. Uh, so, yeah, you know, we're going to want to read more about the, the wiki genus list. Uh, so just going to read you just a little bit. Uh, rarities listed represent the level listed for each genus in the game code, and not necessarily what is most often encountered during surveys. So surveys is when you're just walking around a planet. Uh, note that each genus has a chance to spawn smaller or larger than average for their species. Smaller species may have a lower rarity while larger species will often have a higher rarity level. Many genus subtypes will also have a different rarity than regular members of their genus, with those known being listed. Megafauna will always be found with a rarity of rare. So just wanted to bring that out so you can get a better idea with that line of code does. Again, you know, need more testing. Okay, so next we have the UAC. Oh, let's go back up here. We have the UAC. Now, I recently got help uh, from the modding Discord channel in regards to what this seed means. It is the universe address of the creature. Now this is exciting because uh, from the information Lenny, uh, big shout out to Lenny and all they do, uh, I had my first breakdown of a seed and it's different sections. This means that the other seeds would follow the same type of breakdown of the sections. So we may be able to use this information to help us understand the other different seeds. Uh, so all seeds start with that zero, right? And then next we have the X, lowercase x. And then the 16 alphanumeric character string. So let's just focus on the string. Uh, the first character of the UA seed stands for Planet Index. Now the next three characters refer to the System Index. The next two characters refer to the galaxy index. So in this case, you'll see it's set to zero, zero. That's Euclid. 
the next two characters refer to the Y coordinate. The next three characters refer to the Z coordinate. And the final three characters refer to the X coordinate. So that's a map to where you got your creature. This is there. There's really no reason to change this seed. Uh, it, it doesn't have any bearing on the looks of the creature. Uh, the same goes for you know species and uh, genus. Um, so you know, keep that in mind if you're just looking to customize the look of the creature. You can kind of skip trying to manipulate those seeds. Um, but now you know what they stand for and you know down the line if you like to you know test uh, by all means I would suggest maybe don't test that sort of thing until uh, you've gotten enough practice and you know constant saving and backing up and uh, yeah I mean this is uh, for later down the road it's it's not important to the companion customization as far as its looks okay so next uh, color base seed pretty self-explanatory uh, this is the seed that determines the color of your critter uh, what I like to do is copy the color seed code from one of my other companions and replace the seed of a different companion now the results are fast but mixed. Sometimes I will get a color that resembles the color I just got the seed from. So let's say like a red primary and I'll take that uh, seed and put it on another creature that I want to have the red primary. Sometimes that'll work out, uh, you know, but other times it's off by a lot. So this is a fun, tea, uh, a fun seed to experiment with as when you continually test this, you'll start to see the patterns on how to get a certain color, like how maybe six represents green. Uh, remember that this color seed will represent sections uh, of the colors of the creature. So you have primary, secondary, accent. You know, just like how your exosuit looks and ships, same thing. The color seed has different sex, uh, different sections, just like the universe address seed. So you would figure that the first half of the color seed would refer to primary color, the middle section would refer to secondary color, and the end section, the accent color. Uh, also maybe it might determine like where the colors are on the body. Not 100%, but uh, that is, you know, something that requires a lot of testing. And uh, you could, I would suggest, you know, write down uh, your results and you may end up with a color chart. Okay, so our final seed is the bone scale seed. Now this seed determines the anatomical structure of a creature. So picture a wolf with a short snout versus one with a longer snout. Ever wanted to make a space coyote? Uh, this is the seed to manipulate to get that result. Uh, when you find one but it doesn't have a uh, long enough snout uh, so this seed will also help with those antelopes with those uneven shoulders and hips uh, experimenting here is how I figured out how to make my uh, grogugu gek ears drop to the side more instead of the ears sticking straight up uh, this is also a great seed to spend time experimenting with as it's one of the only other seeds that alters physical appearance of the creature 
besides the descriptors. So we have a creature seed. And you can see that this creature has these kind of, uh, I don't know, like armory kind of plates maybe. Uh, that is coming from the creature seed. But you'll notice that this creature doesn't have a color base seed uh, because it's getting it from this creature seed. Uh, however, you can put in uh, your own seed. Uh, so, you know, from here, maybe you want to do this. Copy that. You can hit Control C, highlight the zero here, Control V. There you go. So that'll drop in a color because it's uh, also alphanumeric, right? Uh, now, what this stands for, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, how this is going to represent the color is going to change, definitely. And so you're just going to have to see what this color looks like when you log into the game. So it's going to be a surprise. But again, if you're like testing, you can maybe eventually get a color chart. Okay, so by the way, uh, I don't know yet what this is or what it does. It is the unique ID. Here it is on the physical characteristics form. It is here with the descriptors. It's in the same section of the descriptors. And I unfortunately do not know what that means. But by the way, if you'll notice here, uh, Peter has set up these buttons that say create. Right? Now, when you hit one of these buttons, it's going to randomize what's in the window. So we have a unique ID going to click it and it just changed the unique ID so you can do that to all of the seeds that's how his macro works so we're going to change the creature seed you see random random string so you can see here We just went through and randomized all of these physical characteristics. Now with testing, if you so feel, you can do a lot of charting and, and that way you can follow your results and replicate results uh, that were desirable. Now we're going to just hit show pet real quick. And it's not going to do that. But it's because he doesn't have a, a picture. Uh, but we can hit update pet file. And it just updated all of those. Those seeds we just randomized. Okay, I want to mention you might want to keep the predator line of code. Set to false, that's here. Uh, you know, so if it's set to true, you can set it to false. And keep in mind that this is one of those things that it's good to know coding. Uh, you'll notice that this is lowercase. So with coding, uppercase and lowercase matters. Let's see. Because if this was a lowercase r, this line would become invalid. Same here. 
capital C, capital B, capital S, no spaces all together. If this was different, this would invalidate this line of code. Keep that in mind. That's why it's really important when you're doing this uh, to know about coding. I'm just showing you what I do to create custom companions. Okay. Uh, oh, so yeah, if you uh, change this to um, false to true, it may attack you. Like the creature. So keep that in mind. Your own companion. I know. Uh, so, by the way, this is the line of code that I changed to get the Scuttler, Freighter Scuttler Fiend. Uh, I changed this code to false because it was true. And then I also changed the uh, pet type to pet in order to pacify it and make it so it doesn't attack you, but it will attack everything around you. So the Scuttler pet, uh, that's probably more for the next tutorial, but I just wanted to bring that up because we're in this section here. Uh, the custom species name, right here. A custom species name is just a place to name the species of your creature and it'll show up in discoveries so you know when you can in the discoveries tab in game you can rename uh, the species of your creature which people love to do for expeditions to make some funny jokey names uh, you can do it here and when you load in game it'll show up in discoveries uh, allowed, unmodified, reroll. You just want to just leave it to true. Just doesn't really affect much. Ah, okay. The has fur line of code uh, is interesting. Not all creatures can have fur, uh, even if you set it to true. Uh, but it may show some fur. So you'll just want to change it and test to see how it looks. So if you want that fuzzy teddy bear proto gek to, you know, make sure that's set to true instead of false. Now, uh, this would only work if true or false is set to lowercase as opposed to other lines of code where you must capitalize it to work. So remember, uh, a good way to remember is before you make a change, check to see if that's capitalized or not. As you can see, this is lowercase f. That's capitalized L. All right, biome. Biome. Uh, this is the type of environment the creature was born in and the type of place where it can lay eggs. Uh, for convenience, I usually set all my companions to a lush biome. This helps me when I do my giveaway-a-thons on the anomaly. I would run out of eggs, leave the anomaly for the paradise planet I was just on, uh, get the, cr the critters to lay the eggs, then zip back up to the anomaly and give out some more. So make sure like I just mentioned to capitalize the L as this line does require it to be capitalized in order for it to work okay so this might be my favorite <laughs> yeah uh, creature type I like to consider the creature type the locomotion animation of a creature I was able to make a sandworm bounce around like a balloon by changing its creature type from sandworm which is its native creature type to floater uh, again here this is a, a 
line of code you have to capitalize. Uh, just like the biome line. Now, here's a tip. And, uh, you know, I'll go over this again. And I, I think I've gone over it in maybe uh, YouTube shorts. If you get a flying lizard from someone, uh, these are also called dragons and griffins. The creature type is set natively to flying lizard. However, uh, when it's set to flying lizard, that usually has you clip into the ground while you're riding on it. Uh, so now if you change this creature type to bird, here, we can also change it here. That's the uh, save editor. So this save editor has a uh, kind of macro you can do that for. But you can change it here to bird. That will make the flying lizard never clip into the ground any longer. And it even makes it fly a little bit faster. Uh, so there are a lot of creature types to experiment with here. So have fun. The uh, save editor does have several options. Uh, again, if you're gonna use a save editor, don't use it unless you are familiar with coding. Okay, so here's the next line. Birth time and last egg time are next. Now I don't mess with birth time because it doesn't do much to help our creature. Except if you want to make it a baby again. Uh, then you can lower this number. Okay, so however, last egg time can be manipulated to make it so your creature can lay a new egg without being bothered by the uh, egg timer. Uh, so you'll see this 10 digit string, right? And we'll take this one for example. You're going to want to bring that number down in order to let your creature lay another egg without dealing with the timer by changing it from, uh, let's say 163 down to 160. Let's just do one. That's one way to do it. Uh, but since I do giveaway-a-thons, I need to be able to pump out as many eggs as I can, and that's why I use the pet timer mod. Uh, that does away with the egg timer altogether and allows you and your pet to keep pumping out those eggies for the people. Again, uh, please use caution whenever dealing with mods. Here we have last trust increase time and last trust decrease time. Uh, you could change it here, uh, but it's easier to just set it to 100% at the top of the behavior section of the form. Right over here. Okay, so let's update real quick. See? Now the trust is at 1.0. So in the JSON code, you can just change this trust line to 1.0, uh, and that will indicate that it is at 100% trust. You know, that, that uh, attribute is something that over time your pet starts to trust you more and more. So yeah, you can just change it here, or you can change it here. This is how you change it on the JSON code. And here, let's put it down to 50, and update. You see it changes it to 0 0.5. Put it back to 100, and update. It brought it back to 
1.0. Uh, yeah, so usually when you get a critter, it's, you know, maybe anywhere from the 50s to the 70s. So this might be the starting trust uh, that you get from a, a, a critter. Uh, in this section, you can change the trust uh, and just put it to, you know, that 1.0. And yeah, so that kind of makes these a little bit redundant. If you can just change it here to 100. Egg modified is the line that indicates if that creature was modified in an egg sequencer. Right here. Uh, this isn't important as you'll be using the save editor and this creature builder to change your pet from now on. Um, again, if you do, uh, I wouldn't if I wasn't familiar with coding. So if you do decide to do that, that's up to you, but I'm showing you how I do it. Now, the only time nowadays I would use the egg sequencer is when I'm looking for a specific color uh, like trying to get a, a critter more yellow or brown by using sodium uh, so you know keep that in mind going forward once you get good enough with this uh, you won't have to use the egg sequencer any longer the has been summoned line is important if you're replacing the entire code of a creature egg with a different creature. Okay, now what I do when I want to give someone, let's say, one of my Titan Worm balloons, uh, because it's a Titan Worm, uh, you can't get it to lay an egg without a mod. However, I can take an already hatched egg that I collected from a different creature and replace that code with the entire JSON code of the Titan Worm Balloon and change this line has been summoned from true to false because the Titan Worm Balloon code is in an egg now and hasn't been summoned yet. So to do this, click on anywhere in this JSON code field. Uh, click Control A to highlight all of the code, then Control C to copy the entire code. Uh, then you go to the egg you want to replace. So in this case, we would go to the save editor and we would go to the egg that we want to replace the code and we would hit Control A to highlight that egg's code, and then we would hit Control V to paste in the Titan Worm code that we just got from the Titan Worm. So that's how you can give pets you can't give out, like the Titan Worm Balloon. Um, I have some plows that you can't interact with. So that means you can't feed it, you can't pet it, you can't get, you can't ride it, you can't get an egg from it. It's basically a, a, a companion that just follows you around. And so it will have that little uh, broken heart symbol next to it forever. Uh, you won't be able to interact with it without a mod. And again, you know, if you're ever going to use mods, please use caution. Uh, read up on the mods. And, uh, uh, you know, again, don't get into this if, you know, you don't know about coding. Uh, so the next is the 
custom name line. Now that's handy if you want to change your, you know, your companion's name without having to do it in game. So when you load in, you'll see this creature's name. is now changed here let's do there you go so please name your creatures they love it by the way uh, I don't care what you name your companion after I give you one of my custom creatures but if you slap your name onto a creature and then give that creature to someone else, that other person will think you made that custom creature. Taking credit for other people's accomplishments is wrong, and you will burn in one of those hells for it. Stop it. Get some help. Sender data! Now this section of code determines uh, who gave you an egg. Uh, so this section only comes up when someone gives you a random egg like me uh, So speaking of random eggs, I just want to give a PSA to all receivers If you receive an egg from someone and you're not sure about that person uh, You know, maybe you're weary of them or the egg Open the egg in the anomaly There you you will be able to safely open an egg and see what it is uh, if you ever get an egg that has a red bar that that says technology overloaded throw it away delete it it can possibly crash and corrupt your safe I'm sorry but there are some sick travelers out there and I want to protect you um, also some person may give you an egg that's the size of a planet and if you were to open it up in the anomaly you would be fine it would because the anomaly warps your companion and only uh, makes it so big within the anomaly uh, that's gonna allow you to take a look in your register and then look at the scale the meters of how big that creature is so right then you can see oh wow this this creature is way too big it's gonna crash my game so lucky I opened it in the anomaly uh, so there you can just delete the egg so please be careful out there okay so finally we have uh, this section here uh, tra traits and moods and uh, you're gonna see here traits mood now if you look at the this forms behavior section uh, you can make all the changes there, or you could do it in the JSON code itself. Uh, but just how we change the trust, you could do it here too. So what I usually like to do, I guess depending on the critter, sometimes it's either sweet, like my butterfly, or maybe ferocious, like a T-Rex. Uh, this is... a. This is a trait, you could go either way. Um, now, if it's loyal, it's going to be around you all the time, which is great for things like the Titan Worm Balloon. I set the Titan Worm Balloon to 100% loyal. Uh, that way, even though you can't interact, you can't interact with it, it's still going to follow you around. So it'll still be that spectacle that it is. Uh, so that's what I usually do to those type of specialty custom companions that you can't interact with. Uh, so at least this way they'll hang out around you. Uh, you can change these. Uh, the mood. Now this is something I, I kind of recently found out. Uh, as far as moods go zero zero indicates their hunger is full 
and you see it's zero zero here. So that means your your creature is full. Now if it's on the opposite end, we update the pet file. 1.0 means that it's hungry. So if you know how to manipulate the JSON file uh, and your critter was currently hungry, you could change that to zero. Do that instead. I hope you guys saw what I just did. There you go. It's a lesson for you. Uh, that'll change it to fed. So 0.0, .0 that's going to change it to fed. Your critter is going to be full. Uh, the other is pet care. Same thing. 0.0 uh, .0 .0 means that uh, they're full. And 1.0 means they need care or attention. Okay, uh, so when you feel satisfied with your changes, you click the update pet file under the behavior section there. Well, I just did. Uh, that's going to update this JSON code with all the changes you made. Now use the same steps I mentioned earlier. You're going to click anywhere, control A to highlight all of the code, control C to copy it all, go into the save editor, uh, and you can use either an empty slot in your pet section or a slot of a creature you maybe want to replace. Uh, so you're going to go into that slot in your JSON code, click anywhere in the JSON code, hit control A so it highlights all of the code, uh, and since you already have the updated creature code from the creature builder in your clipboard because you hit control copy you're just gonna hit control V and that will paste in the new updated JSON code from the creature builder here so thank you for joining me and I truly hope you can get to spend as many hours as I have experimenting with the creature builder and save editor uh, I want to see what you come up with, so stay in touch. Next tutorial, we'll go over what makes those glitch stack critters. Happy customizing. I'm on setter, and you were on site.